Please stand. Masaya nating ipaghanda ang pagdating ng malulubos tagapagligtas natin tuwiri mga landas mga alitan ay tapusin sapagkat si Kristo'y darating. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, and welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. We begin our celebration. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Unworthy servants that we are, O Lord, grieved by the guilt of our deeds, we pray that you may gladden us by the saving advent of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Raise a glad cry, you barren one who did not bear. Break forth in jubilant song, you who were not in labor. For more numerous are the children of the deserted wife than the children of her who has a husband, says the Lord. Enlarge the space for your tent. Spread out your tent clothes and sparingly. Lengthen your ropes and make firm your stakes. For you shall spread abroad to the right and to the left. Your descendants shall dispossess the nations and shall people the desolate cities. Fear not, you shall not be put to shame. You need not blush, for you shall not be disgraced. The shame of your youth you shall forget. The reproach of your widowhood no longer remembered. For he who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife married in youth and then cast off, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you, but with great tenderness, I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath, for a moment, I hid my face from you, but with enduring love, I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me, like the days of Noah, when I saw the waters of Noah should never again delude the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Through the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken. My love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken says the Lord, who has mercy on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you drew me clear and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praise to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime, his goodwill. At nightfall, weeping enters in, but with the dawn, rejoicing. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You change my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, forever will I give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Please stand. Alleluia, alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the messengers of John the Baptist had left, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone? dressed in fine garments those who dress luxuriously and live sumptuously are found in royal palaces then what did you go out to see a prophet yes i tell you and more than a prophet this is the one about whom scripture says behold i am sending my messenger ahead of you he will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, no one is greater than John. Yet the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. All the peoples who listened, including the tax collectors, who were baptized with the baptism of John, acknowledged the righteousness of God. But the Pharisees and the scholars of the law who were not baptized by him, rejected the plan of God for themselves. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Kung titingnan po natin yung konteksto ng ating Ibanghelyo, alam niyo po, sa panahon ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo, sa panahon ni Juan Bautista, Sobrang importante ng relihiyon sa mga buhay ng tao noon. Very important. Essential na essential yung, yung relihiyon para sa kanila. Na in fact, somehow ang relihiyon pa nga, paminsan-minsan ang nagdidetermine ng kanilang buhay o magiging buhay. Kaya sobrang importante. And that is why, along with this, the religious leaders during the time of Jesus were considered to be very much respected people. They were people who had the authority. Nirirespeto, pinaniniwalaan. Unfortunately, along the way, dahil sa experience ng bilang mga tao lang, siguro, nakaranas ng kapangyarihan, nakaranas ng karangyaan yung mga religious leaders sa panahon ng ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo, nagkaroon ng maraming distraction sa kanilang focus. Ano ba dapat ang focus nila? O sino ba talaga ang dapat focus nila? Siyempre, ang Diyos bilang mga religious leaders, iyon dapat yung pinagtutuunan ng pansin. Kaya lang, dahil nga naranasan yung kapangyarihan, karangyaan, pleasure ng buhay, kataniyagan even, Nagkaroon ng distraction. 
yun na yung naging focus nila. Kaya nga nung dumating si Juan Bautista, he was seen to be by many a religious leader, pero napapansin nyo ba, parang awkward yung relationship nila ng mga present religious leaders, yung mga eskriba, yung mga pariseyo. Awkward. Bakit? Eh si Juan Bautista kasi pinupo na yung kanilang inaasta. John was telling them their faults being religious leaders. And it did not, you know, settled well with them. Kaya nga hindi nila tanggap si Juan Bautista. Kaya yung ino-offer ni Juan Bautista sa kanila, hindi nila tanggap. Kung tutusin, kung meron sigurong cancel culture sa panahon ng ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo, si Juan Bautista ang unang biktima ng cancel culture. Eh, hindi gusto ng karamihan eh, ng religious leaders. Bakit? Eh, hindi sumasabay sa atin. Eh, yun yung sinasabi nila. Dapat tayong religious leaders, maayos yung mga suot. Eh, ano bang suot niya? Diyos ko, nandun sa disyerto. Eh, hindi ka naliligo kung ano-ano lang kinakain. Siguro ganun yung sinasabi nila. No? Ito, he was always not in conformity with these people. Ibang iba. Kung ang kinakain ng mga religious leaders nung time na yun, eh dahil siguro bigay ng mga tao, masasarap na pagkain, si Juan Bautista, kumakain ng insekto. Somehow, he was not in conformity with what was prevailing among the religious leaders of that time. But why was that? Why was that? If the religious leaders had that kind of lifestyle, it was because, sabi ko nga, doon sa distraction na naranasan nila. Si Juan Bautista, kaya ganon na lang yung kanyang relasyon, is because he was totally focused on his mission. He was totally focused on God. He never conformed to the crooked ways, to the corrupted ways of the religious leaders of that time. Klarong klaro kay Juan Bautista kung ano yung mission niya. At yun ay ang handa ang daan para sa lahat. Ihanda ang daan ng parating na manliligtas ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Kaya hindi siya basta-basta na didistract. Kung ang mga religious leaders during that time were conforming to the crooked and corrupted ways and somehow bent their faith with God, kasi parang napalitan na yung pananampalataya eh, dun sa mga naranasan nilang kamunduhan. Si Juan Bautista, he kept his faith. Kahit pa ang daming-daming nagtitem sa kanya. Kami siguro nagsasabi sa kanya, huwag mo nang gawin yan, kami bahala sa'yo, basta sumali ka lang sa akin, sumali ka lang sa amin. Magaling ka magsalita, matalino ka, ang ganda ng sinasabi mo, pero basta sumali ka lang sa amin. Wala tayong problema. Yun siguro ang sinasabi sa kanya. But he never gave in. He never gave in. He kept his faith with God. Nasa sa puso ni Juan Bautista ay ang Diyos lamang. Kaya gano'n na lang yung relasyon nila. Mga religious leaders at siya. But I ask you, between the religious leaders and John the Baptist, sino ba ang mas pinuri ng ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo? Narinig naman natin sa gospel, hindi ba? Among those born of women, no one is greater than John. Ito yung pananalita ng ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo. Pinuri niya si Juan Bautista. Among all women, no one is greater than John. Bakit? Dahil nga dun na natili at nanampalataya si Juan Bautista sa kanyang misyon sa kanyang Diyos.
inihanda niya ang daan para sa parating na manliligtas. E ano naman ito sa atin? Ano naman yung leksyon na pwede nating matutunan sa buhay ni Juan Bautista? Alam nyo, ang kapaskuhan natin ngayon, ang, ang, ibang iba na talaga, ano, napaka-develop na. In fact, pwede nating sabihin napaka-commercialized na ng Pasko natin. And with this, somehow, yung konsepto, pagkaintindi natin ng Pasko, maaaring nagkaroon na rin ng mga distractions. Siguro, minsan ang naiisip natin, ang Pasko dapat laging may party. Ang Pasko dapat laging palaging maganda yung lugar, maraming ilaw. Ang Pasko dapat palaging dapat sagana, maraming pagkain. Ang Pasko dapat palagi dapat sagana sa bulsa, maraming bonus, Christmas bonus, Christmas gifts. Baka nakakalimutan natin na ang tunay na diwa ng Pasko, babalik-balikan natin e ang ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo. Ito siguro marahil ang leksyon sa buhay ni Juan Bautista sa Ebanghelyo na nabasa natin sa araw na ito. Huwag sana tayong padistract sa mga palamuti na ibinalot natin sa Pasko. Na ang panawagan sa ating lahat ni Juan Bautista ay magkaroon ng focus sa tunay na diwa ng Pasko. At yan ay ang ating manliligtas, ang ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo. Hindi ko sinasabing huwag nating idiwang ang Pasko with all of this adornments. Ang sinasabi niya marahil, ang focus natin ay ang ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo. Na kahit pa mawala ang mga bagay-bagay na yan, kahit pa walang gifts, kahit pa walang celebrations, dapat meron pa rin tayong dahilan upang maging masaya, upang maging maligaya. At yan ay dahil ipinanganak ang ating manliligtas, ang ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo. O di ba focus? Kaya nga, napakaganda ng imahen ng original Christmas. Alam niyo yung original Christmas? Yung pinakaunang Pasko? Wala namang ganito, di ba? Wala namang maraming ilaw. Wala namang maraming pagkain. Wala namang maraming regalo. Pero masaya pa din. At tunay na punong-puno ng saya. Bakit? Isa lamang ang dahilan. Ipinanganak ang ating Panginoong Yesu Kristo. Focus sa kapanganakan ng ating maliligtas. Yan ang hamon ni Juan Bautista. Kaya nga, sana sa Advent season, sa panahon ng Pasko, panalangin natin na hindi mawala tayo sa focus natin sa ating Panginoong Diyos. Sana hindi tayo madistract ng maraming activities natin, ng maraming mga palumuti ng ating Pasko. Sana meron at meron tayong pagkakataon na makapiling ang ating Diyos, ang ating manliligtas sa Kapaskuhan na ito. Paano? sa pamamagitan ng pagdarasan. Paitingin ang ating pagdarasan. At sinasabi ko sa inyo, tunay na magiging maligaya ang ating Pasko. Magsitayo po tayong lahat. The coming of our Redeemer was foretold by the prophets by preaching repentance for sins. John the Baptist heralded His coming. In the spirit of penance, let us ask God's help through our prayers. In every petition, let our answer be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Church may reveal the glory of the Lord for all people to see. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christian leaders may become instruments of truth and justice and lead their people in the way of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our hearts may be open to receive the message of the prophets speaking like voices in the wilderness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that others may see the patience of God in the way we treat them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those whose deaths we recall may enjoy pardon and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now in the silence of our hearts, we offer our personal and our particular intentions. And we also pray for the intentions of this Mass. Most loving Father, look upon the needs of your people and grant our petitions as we prepare for your Son, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Please stand. Pray, my dear friends, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Socrates our Bishop, Fidelis' assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Dominic and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we all dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you, peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Son of Mary. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called in the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Corpus et Sanctinis Christi, custodio et lei, vita materna, in the body and blood of Christ, blessed be the Father.
please kneel for the prayer for the election. Let us pray that the forthcoming national and local elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides the destinies of nations. Let us pray together. Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From coercion, intimidation, violence, and terrorism. Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth. Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud. Deliver us, Lord. From gullibility to the deceptive and blindness of perspective. Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language. Deliver us, Lord. Let us pray together. Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That care for creation may never be ignored. Hear us, Lord. That solidarity may guide the path of peace and development. Hear us, Lord. The genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others and grow in holiness. Guide our politics as you guide our lives. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bago po tayo magtapos ng misa, ako po yung magpapasalamat sa ating lector commentator, sa ating acolyte and Eucharistic minister, at sa inyong lahat po na nakiisa sa misang ito, Maraming maraming salamat. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. We all go in peace. Thanks be to God. We shall now have the prayer for the blessing of the sick and the blessing of our rosaries and other religious articles. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness towards our brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ and Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. May these rosaries, images, candles, oils, and other religious articles, our devotees and pilgrims, be blessed and made holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.